and welcome to the Oddity Archive, the show where the word futility is not in our vocabulary. Though I guess it kind of technically is now, now that I've used it. Um, so much for that intro. Uh, anyway, if you've been regularly following the Archive over the last 14 months or so, you know full well that I have been taking sporadic little stabs at a concept known as micro-broadcasting, which, here in the United States at least, comes from a part of Part 15 of the FCC Federal Communications Commission list of rules and regulations, and this allows for legal, unlicensed broadcasting. Now, to date, I have taken four stabs at this concept, and three of which have been successful. So with that, for the benefit of the uninitiated, and also just to let everybody have that little refresher, here's a quick rundown of my experiments to date. This is an awesome band. This is called One Kilohertz. Uh, I think they're going to be big someday. Back on the Aimvest video episode of Oddity Archive, I mentioned that I owned a handful of public domain cartoon video cassettes growing up, and that most of them went in the garage sale pile a few years later. Imagine that. Anyway, I... Uh, in case I didn't mention it, this is for the fine-tuning for the specific spot on the AM band, hence why it's going out and in. Now, if you remember that little fiasco, I said that if I couldn't get a refund on that transmitter, that I would publicly destroy the thing. So, today I am not going to destroy that thing. Um, I can just hear the disappointment. Uh, so, it took me almost two months, but I was indeed able to get a refund on that thing, and I have since purchased another one of those talking house thingies, and I've tested it, and it works. So, with that in mind, today is what could actually very well be the final ride of the Archive's own little non-broadcasting empire, K-L-A-K-T-V slash F-M and now slash A-M. And here is the replacement talking house transmitter, also model 5.0. And, uh, however, there are actually two models of the talking house transmitter 5.0 out there. The older one has a weaker frequency response, and the newer one has a better frequency response. That's really about the only difference. And given the results of my tests to date, even though I was trying to acquire the newer model, I'm pretty sure that this is actually the old Talking House version 5.0. And if you saw the episode that looked at the last one I had that didn't work, of course, um, this one has all the exact same features, same antenna, and if I turn it around here, it has all the same inputs, same everything. And uh, so if you want to take a, a better look at the inner workings of this and a more in-depth look at the individual parts, I'd actually suggest you go back and watch the last video I did on this because I think it would just be redundant for me to do this all over again. But uh, yeah, there it is. 
And we'll have to get back to this guy. Despite the transmitter's claims of having automatic gain control in the main input, you know, to level out the volume, I have found that if it's there at all, it's unresponsive. And to make things more frustrating, the built-in mic input on that thing has nothing going for it as well. And uh, as you've seen possibly twice now, it's just one of those three and a half millimeter inputs. So I'd have to use a computer mic for it. So I couldn't even use a decent mic. And uh, the built-in microphone on that thing is no great shakes either. But uh, anyway, this meant that despite having the two main ingredients for my sad little AM station built right into the transmitter, they don't really cut the mustard. Now, I could run everything that I need out of my computer, but it would be a lot of unnecessary stress for my already overworked desktop, and uh, plus there'd probably be some extra interference, so... This meant consciously having to go the old-school route. Now, years ago, I used to own a little mixer very similar to this one that I used once or twice, and I packed it away. And uh, about a year ago, I donated the damn thing to the Goodwill. So, uh, naturally, I would need it again now, you know? Isn't that how it always works? But, um, anyway, I, uh had to do a little shopping, so uh, I popped down to Guitar Center, which is somewhere I haven't been since before I started making Archive, and uh, I found myself plunking down $60 for as close as I could get to that old mixer that I had, uh, which I had originally paid $40 for back in about 2007, so um, yay inflation... Anyway, this is a Behringer Zenix Q502, and I don't remember the exact model that I used to have, but that was also a Behringer Zenix something or other, and it had roughly the same features, and it was about the same size. But uh, admittedly, I've never really been a big fan of Behringer stuff. Uh, I think it tends to be really noisy. I mean, it's not exactly real high-end gear to begin with, but uh, given that, save for the microphone, I'm just using this as a pass-through for pre-existing stuff, and given that it's AM radio, I figured, you know, I, I can live with that. Anyway, this little mixer has most of the ingredients I need to get things up and running, it's got a single proper XLR input, mic input, and it's also got EQ, these two little blue knobs in the center here that I'm trying to point to, and a compression, which is this other little blue knob. And um, unfortunately, these luxuries are confined to just that one channel that the mic goes into. As such, any processing with anything else that I would like to plug into this thing is a no-go. This meant that I had to go shopping again. As you could well imagine, I wasn't too thrilled at the prospect of having to use full-on outboard gear for such a seemingly simple task. But uh, having said that, it was something of a relief when I found this sucker at a nearby used instrument slash gear type place. And this is an Alesis, Alesis, I've never been clear on that, nano compressor that apparently dates to 1997. And uh, for what it's worth, I paid 40 bucks for it. And uh, it originally listed for $149. And I only know that because I've got the original box here. Anyway, this has all the basics that I would need. So it has stereo input and output, plus I could run sidechain if I wanted to. And it's got all the basic settings that you would expect to find on a compressor. But uh, anyway, realizing that I didn't want this setup of mine to get any more needlessly complicated or expensive... I drew the line at adding in a standalone EQ unit. I mean, I figured if I were that desperate, there's little built-in tweaks on, like, iPods and Discmans, and I could run it through my home stereo receiver if I wanted, so I could kind of do that myself. Um, again, I just didn't want to go there for such a, a small final product. 
But uh, anyway, let's take a look at the final setup. All right, at long last, here it is, the final setup of KLAKAM. And uh, yes, we are broadcasting at the moment, although we're not actually broadcasting anything. And uh, right now, I'm on 1620 AM, but uh, my other good frequency I have found is 1530. But I can't, uh, I, I guess I just haven't done this enough yet to figure what is best all the time. Uh, not that I really intend to do this with any kind of regularity, but uh, yeah, the 1620 is the magic frequency at the moment. And then I've got the antenna running up to the ceiling and across the ceiling. And I have found that uh, running the antenna along the wall and uh, any number of things, I get about the same end result. And uh, in my car, I'm able to get to generously about a quarter mile radius. So we're not dealing with much power here. Um, I have read that this is one-tenth of a watt uh, of what I'm putting out here. But anyway, there's the transmitter, already on, already hooked up, already calibrated. So let's take a look at uh, what's one of my, uh, I guess, more elaborate setups here, although still a little dumbed down. Uh, but let's just start with the basic signal flow. So I've got a disc man hooked up, and I've also got my usual SM57 that I use for archive. And uh, the 57 is running into the mixer. This is running into this compressor unit, which is running into the input of the mixer. And then it's all running out to the transmitter. So, um, I don't want to get too technical here, but I think I'm going to anyway, just because I can. So, uh, this is strictly for the geeks. Um, so, let's start with the mixer. I've got my uh, mic hooked into... Um, come on, autofocus, do what you're supposed to. I've got my uh, mic running XLR into the board, channel 1, which is, as I've mentioned, the only channel on this little mixer with bells and whistles like EQ and compression. So I've got that going, and uh, let me also state that I've experimented with the using a quarter inch input XLR to quarter inch, and it's not really any better. In fact, it's not quite as good. Uh, of course, this is all relatively speaking. Uh, and I've tried other microphones, and my usual 57 just seems to be the best. And it doesn't need any, you know, like phantom power, any kind of signal boost. It's uh, just a straight, normal, dynamic mic. But anyway, um, not much gain on it, this top white knob, if I can get my camera to focus again. And uh, that's on purpose, because I have it set to uh, have the gain and compression levels, uh, so it's fairly flat. Uh, but also so that if I were broadcasting and I wanted to come out of a song or something fairly easily, I could just turn this knob up all the way and not have to worry about the levels. So it would just crank all the way to, uh, I guess, plus 15, that is, um, instead of, you know, having to find anything. It doesn't stop at uh, Unity, which would be s straight up 12 o'clock. Anyway, uh, EQ... The Talking House really doesn't like high-end very well. A um, lot of sibilance, uh, S-sounds, distortion that it's prone to, and you'll get to hear plenty of that. Um, but So I've got a low and a high band EQ, that's all it's got, and I've got the uh, high just neutral. And then I've got the low boosted just a little, just for something resembling that you know stereotypical radio voice. And below that's pan left and right, but we're dealing with AM, so yeah, it's kind of a moot point. Anyway, uh, let's jump over to the compressor here. And uh, this is only processing, as I'm sure you've gathered, just the CD player. But uh, also, I could use a, an iPod or hook this up to a stereo or pretty much whatever I want. This, is, uh, this was just in the name of convenience. So here's the compressor, and let me just give a quick rundown of the settings. So I've got a moderate threshold 
which uh, the lower the threshold, the lower the volume that the compressor will kick in at and flatten the volume. Uh, ratio, it's not marked, but I think it's about 4 to 1, a 4 to 1 ratio, so slamming the level about four times its original level, I guess you could say, and uh, that is on purpose. I'll get to that in a moment here. Uh, attack and release, which is how uh, quickly the compressor latches onto and lets go of the compressed signal. I have the attack up just a little because it seems to open up the music a little bit when I do music stuff. Uh, so I've got that just up a bit, uh, about 20%, and then the release is all the way down for the quickest release possible. And the output is, what, 20-30% there? Um, that is because I can't really put much signal into the transmitter. It just doesn't like high levels of anything. So it means I'm stuck with a, a lower volume level than commercial AM. So hence my trying to compensate by slamming my levels a lot harder. And of course, I've got things running as flat and as loud as I can get away with with the mic. But really, it's very quiet because this is uh, the main meter. It very rarely makes it above 20, the, that minus 20, that first green light. Again, that's about as loud as this thing can uh, go, the transmitter, that is. So anyway, um, I guess it's time for a demo. I've got the stereo on. It's already tuned to the right station, though I have uh, the radio muted at the moment. So anyway, uh, let me unmute it, and I'm going to crank this a bit just to keep it audible, and there will be some feedback because I can't use headphones and still have you hear this, so just be prepared for a little feedback. I'm, I've got it set to where I think it'll be minimal. Alright, so we're on 1620. We're just kind of humming and buzzing away. And there we go. And you can hear a little feedback. There's the speaker that it's coming out of. But yes, we are on the air right now. And uh, just in the name of uh, keeping any potential feedback to a minimum, I'm going to go ahead and shut this right back off. Okay, so I've got a copy of our theme song all queued up, and uh, let's just take a listen. And there's the compressor. This is how hard the level is getting slammed right now. This is what's going in, and this is what's getting flattened. Okay, there you go. So, I've done a bunch of tests and um, I'll let you listen to them because it's a lot better than sitting here listening and watching me play with this, but I've done tests with uh, the built-in microphone on this. I have plugged a microphone directly into this. I have uh, done everything I can think of. I even, uh, there was a pre-recorded message on here uh, initially that I was able to salvage, so I'll play uh, part of that for you too. But um, otherwise, Here's a full range of tests. But you have to take care of the wallaby. That's the thing. You can't just trot him out for the chicks. Let's not get lost in the details. <laughs> okay. Okay. Start GoFundMe. GoFundMe for Matt. I'm doing this. We'll see if we can get people to donate for your wallaby fund. It's true. Okay, this is my using the built-in microphone on the Talking House transmitter, and it kind of sounds like I'm coming to you from the year 1897, doesn't it? Isn't it just wonderful?
Well, I guess it pays to actually, you know, do my testing thoroughly first, because as it turns out, and to, to actually film my stuff in sequence, as it turns out, my computer microphone does not work when plugged directly into the talking house transmitter. So what you're hearing now is actually my usual Shure SM57, and I'm using an XLR to quarter inch cable and a quarter inch to eighth inch adapter going directly into the box. And as you can hear, this thing is very prone to overmodulation. I have no control over volume. I have no control over anything. I distort no matter if I'm boom close to the mic or if I stand way back. And there's a ton of sibilance to boot. So, uh, yeah, this is what it sounds like. Again, isn't it lovely? And this is the still somewhat underwhelming result of all my work. This is about as good as I've been able to get at least my completely live setup to sound. So uh, I guess I ought to at least pretend to be a DJ here. So uh, uh, this is station KLAK, largely because KBN was already taken. It does exist out there. But uh, KLAK, as far as I know, is not taken right now. So that's what we are, even if only unofficially. And uh, this is, yeah, I guess it's beautiful downtown Aurora's home for, I would say, the hits, but we can't play those on YouTube now, can we? So, anyway, here's that wonderful overplayed bit of musical mastery by Benny Boy himself, who's talking about himself in third person, Pavand. <laughs> Congratulations. This Talking House transmitter is a powerful marketing tool. We put this message on your transmitter as part of our quality control testing. You can adjust the volume of this internal speaker using the dial on the back of the transmitter. Please note, the volume control for the internal speaker will not affect the volume of your broadcast. Thanks for listening. This message will repeat until you record your own message over it. Most folks with their own radio station, I'd imagine, would use the opportunity to play some of their favorite music or uh, uh, maybe get up on their little soapbox and drone on for a while about whatever social economic issues that they have a hard on for. Um, or maybe like uh, run some old time radio shows. Um, but uh, as I'm sure you well know by now, I just don't seem to operate that way. So I figured since I have my little station up and running that I would reach out to my old ex-Soviet Glasnost era DJ buddy, Sergei, and I asked him to do a one-time only one-hour radio show. And uh, of course he said yes. I mean, I wouldn't be talking about this otherwise now, would I? And, uh, of course, I just conveniently recorded the thing off-air. And so, I'd like to share with you now a scoped version of Sergei's show. Enjoy. K-L-A-K! Give it a clock, and you know what means. It's time to open Sergei's Catacomb of Classics. Let us first dust off this one from Stilly Dawn, because it is time for his to do again.
I remember back in old country, I had a wax cylinder of that song. It got broke in rock scare of 1966, but very happy to find copy in America when I first come here in 1991. That was Connie Franklin with Heart Has Mind of His Own. Up next is track from 1973 from woman who caused big scandal in old country by not wearing babushka on record sleeve. It's Carlene Simone and You Are So Vanity. And up next is beautiful track from Good Profession, Carpenter. I first heard track in 1972 when working fish market near Leningrad. I fall in love with his voice. This soup or star. That song very much make me feel like dancing. That was by Doom Sayer, by the way. Up next is track from Glass Look. Is Vodka You Find the Bush. Good advice to stay alive, though not always easy to do during Brezhnev years. That was Bitches and Stay Life. Time for next song. You belong to me, just a little Were American Bivuchkas not allowed to sing back then? We progressive, not like you, America. Anyway, next track, beautiful song about comrades and sacrifice, is Simon and Garfunkel with Bridge on Trouble Water. I think song about shuffleboard on boat. Typical wasteful western people. That Lido shuffle by Bozo Skaggs. Unfortunate we on last song for today. But I pick good one. Last song from King of Rock and Roll, Mr. Elvin Presley. I pick this because I have no regrets about today's music. I please to bring music for you. Goodbye. Well, that's it for today's archive. Join us next time when I am wholly unable to distinguish Sergi from myself, and am forced to visit a court-appointed psychiatrist. I know you belong to somebody new, but tonight you belong to me. K-L-A-K!